All right, so here in unit four, we're going to focus on the idea of repetition of use of code in our programs. And we're going to do that by looking specifically at what are called while loops, for loops, and nested loops. And lesson one specifically, we're going to look at what are called while loops. So we're going to start there, talk about why loops exist, and how this specific loop allows us to reuse and repeat code in our program. By the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to explain these three learning targets. First is you'll be able to understand the concept of what's called an iteration. Second, you'll be able to write a while loop program in Python to solve a problem. And third, you'll be able to trace through a while loop and track the values of variables in a Python program as that loop is running. And that's really important because if you're designing your own loops, you need to really understand how they work and what your program and what your computer are going to do when that code is run. So, so far in programming, we've looked at these first two types of what are called control structures. So, in chapters one and two, you looked at what were called sequential control structures, and that was when everything just went through logically. The second thing we looked at was selection. This was chapter three, and this is where we made all of our decisions, this or this. And the third one that we look at in this chapter is called repetition. So to give you more of a visual of these three, as I said, sequential is your linear program that goes step by step in order. Every single instruction is run. Um, this isn't all of our programs so far, but it's chapters one and two. There's one flow. It's for very, very basic programs like our distance formula, or if you were to build a dream house in graphics, anything in graphics where we're not making a decision from that first chapter where we just did this and this and this, all of those programs had a sequential control structure making up the program. Then last chapter, we looked at what is called decision making. And this is where we had if conditionals, where if the condition was true, we ran some sort of action. Sometimes if the condition was false, we did nothing. Sometimes there may have been another action in here. Sometimes you had if, elif, else. Those are all your decision makings where you can take different paths. There's a selection, and the selection really decides how your program is going to run. Every time it's going to run differently, depending on how that condition evaluates. So it's called a selection control structure. And then here in this chapter, we're going to use that third control structure called repetition, which uses looping. And so what happens in this is typically there, there's a decision somewhere in the process. In this program, it's here. If that decision is true, it pops it back up and it reruns the code. If it's still true, pops it back up, reruns the code. Still true, pops it back up, reruns the code. And when it's false, it then finally moves on. So as I said, this is what we're going to focus on here in Chapter 4. And then the first thing we're going to look at is called a while loop. So before I talk about while loops, I really want to talk about this bullet point here because sometimes I get questions from students about why I'm requiring them to use a loop because really you could type out your code multiple times. However, this allows us to be way more efficient with our programs because we're reusing code rather than making it incredibly long. You're probably starting to realize that if you could have reused some lines of code back when you did your graphics for unit, that would have been really helpful instead of having to retype, retype, retype. So this is the most efficient way to make a program is by using loops to help you reuse a large chunk of code. Now, while loops in particular allow us to write what are called indefinite loops, which is a little bit even more helpful. An indefinite loop is a way that you can keep something looping for an undetermined amount of times. So essentially what this loop does is it keeps going until a condition is true. And it may not actually be obvious how many times it needs to loop. For example, if the user chooses how many times to loop, you don't always know. And as a result, it can not only change every time you run the code, but it can also not be determined until the user chooses for that loop 
to end. So indefinite means that that loop, it's not obvious how many times it's going to loop, and that's where while loops are extremely important. Now up on the screen here, you see the basic syntax for a while loop. You see the word while, and that signals to Python in your computer that you are going to be running a while loop. You then here see the use of a Boolean condition again, so just like an if statement, these use Boolean conditions, something that needs to be, that can evaluate to be true or false. And then you see this colon at the end that signifies the end of your Boolean condition. And then anything that you want looped is here. So anything that you want to be repeated, that code is underneath the while loop, the while word, and it's indented. So it works very much like an if conditional with the indents and the colon and the Boolean statement, but while just tells the computer to do something different. So a couple of key notes at the bottom, the condition, so this Boolean condition right here, is what must be true for this segment of code to continue running. So in essence, what happens with a while loop is it comes in and it checks if this condition is true. If it's true, it runs the code, and then it pops back up here and it rechecks the condition. And if the condition is still true, it runs it again. If it's still true, it runs it again. And when this condition becomes false, so when this Boolean statement finally is no longer true, the computer stops running the code, so it won't run the loop, and it goes back down here and continues on its way, so the place where it's after the indent. So this will keep repeating until this condition is false. So what we're going to do together on the next few slides is we're going to actually just trace through a couple of examples so you can see how a while loop would run, and then in the next video we're actually going to go in and type these out together. So here, if you just kind of eyeball this program, you can see that we start and we have a variable j. So what I'm going to do is write j and say j starts off at 1. I then have a second variable sum, and sum starts off at 0. So then I come down here and it says while j is less than or equal to 5. So that is my Boolean condition that needs to be true. Well, if I look at j right here, j is currently 1. That is less than or equal to 5. So that means I'm going to go into my code. I'm going to say sum is sum plus j, so it's 0 plus 1. So sum becomes 1. And then here, j adds 1, so j becomes 2. And then I pop back up, and I recheck my condition. And this time around, I notice that j is 2. Well, j2 is less than or equal to 5 is still true. And as a result, I take my sum and I add j to it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then j plus 1 is 3 as well. And then I go through again, and I say, okay, third time around, j is now 3. 3 is less than or equal to 5. That is still true, so the code runs again. Sum is sum plus j, so 3 plus 3 is 6. And then j adds 1, so that's 4. And then I go through, and I look at it again, and I say, okay, Looking at this condition, 4 is less than or equal to 5. That is true. So then I repeat that process again. Sum is 6 plus 4, so that's 10. J becomes 5. I loop back up. J is less than or equal to 5. That is still true, so I run this code again. Sum is sum plus J, so that's 15. J adds 1. Then when I loop up this last time and I check the condition, 6 is not less than or equal to 5, so that condition is what makes it false. And then it pops down here and it prints out j to the screen, so this is where I want to have my output showing in my tracing. It's going to print out j, which is 6, and then it's going to print out sum equals, and the sum is currently set to 15. So you can see how it keeps reusing and repeating that code until the condition is false. And once the condition is false, it pops it out of that loop. All right, so same process here. It's just a slightly different loop this time around. So we're going to start off with i, and i is set to 70. We then have sum 
sum is set to 0. And we go through and it says, well, i is greater than 0. Well, I can currently see that i is greater than 0. So sum becomes sum plus i, which becomes 0 plus 70. It then says print i to the screen. So I'm going to go to my output. I'm going to print what i currently is, which is 70. And then it says i equals i minus 10. So we subtract 10. And then we loop back up i is still greater than 0, so the sum is 70 plus 60, which is 130. Print i to the screen, well i is currently set to 60, so we print that, and then we subtract 10. And then we re-loop back up. i as 50 is still greater than 0, as a result you would perform the sum option, which is 130 plus 50, which now becomes 180, you print i to the screen, it is currently set to 50, and then we subtract 10. Next, loop back up, still greater than 0, so we add i plus sum, and this becomes 220. Print i to the screen, it's currently 40, subtract 10. Still true, so we do that again. 220 plus 30 becomes 250. We print i, it's currently set to 30, subtract 10, loop back up, still true, so we add sum plus i, print i to the screen, subtract 10, loop back up one more time, still true, so here these become 270 plus 10 is 280, print i to the screen, subtract 10, so that's 0, now this time when we loop up, as we check our condition, this is, i is set to 0. 0 is not greater than 0. That is false. As a result, we jump out of the code, and we're now back to that unindented section. We're going to print i to the screen, which is 0, and then we print sum equals, and our sum value is 280. All right, so a third example here. We have x, we have sum, starting at 0. This says while x is less than 10. Well, x is currently less than 10, so sum is sum plus x, so that becomes 0 plus 1 is 1. Print x to the screen. So that's our output, and we're going to print 1. And then we loop back up. Okay, x is still 1, which is still less than 10. So sum is sum plus x, which is now 1 plus 1 is 2. Print x to the screen. Loop back up. Still less than 10. 1 plus 2 is 3. We output 1. Now what some of you are probably noticing is x is not changing anywhere. And what's going to happen here is we're going to keep looping. We're going to get stuck here because we're not actually updating x to be anything different and as a result, we never pop out of this loop. So this is where you have to be really careful with loops because you can get stuck inside of them. And really what's going to happen is this is going to continue on forever. This is going to continue on forever. And your computer is just going to keep running it until you have to kill it manually. So be careful with your loops. Make sure you're making it possible for you to pop out of that loop. You want there to be an instance where this Boolean statement becomes false and gets you out. So what we just saw is actually called an infinite loop for a good reason. It's, or an endless loop. It's something that keeps going and going and going and going and going infinitely, and it's endless. And these loops happen due to having a terminating condition or this Boolean statement that never becomes false. So terminating condition is how you pop out of that loop. That's when your Boolean condition is false. And if you don't have a terminating condition, if you can never make that false and it's never met, you're going to constantly loop inside of that infinite loop. Okay, fourth and final tracing example. This one we start with y is 1, sum starts at 0, and then here it says while y is greater than 10. Okay, well, y is not greater than 10, so that is false. So we jump to the in unindented code, and we just print to the screen sum equals 0. 
Now, some of you are wondering right now is, why on earth do we have this piece of code here? We could never get inside of it. And this is another thing you have to be careful of when you're using loops. You also have to make it possible to get inside of your loops. Not only do you have to make it possible for that infinite loop to end and for you to get out, you also need to set your program up so this loop runs when you would like it to. If you don't want it to run, then it shouldn't be in your program. But there should be a way for that loop to run. If it's never going to run, then it's not very effective code if you have it in your program. And these loops are appropriately named a never running loop and it will never run because that terminating condition right here, this boolean statement, is met the first time that the program is run. So it runs through, it evaluates that boolean condition, it's false, and it pops out. So just be on the lookout for that if you have a loop that's never running. This might be the case. Make sure that this condition is true at some point so that loop can actually run.